As this month of Sia comes to a close, and yes, I already know it's August, it's time to answer a question that some people may have been asking. What really started the Blood Universe? People seem to think it's Blood Plus, but no, it's actually something else. A film from early 2000 that began to create a universe we'd soon get to enjoy. Blood the Last Vampire is an action horror film from Production IG and director Hiroyuki Kitakubo and was released in theaters in July of 2000. A sequel manga, Blood the Last Vampire 2002, was released in April 2001, followed by three light novels and a video game before the popular series Blood Plus and Blood Sea were produced. You can find Blood the Last Vampire thanks to Manga Entertainment. Teropterans are evil beasts which pose as humans and live only to drink human blood. Fortunately for the human world, there are groups dedicated to destroying them. A brooding and mysterious girl named Saya is the best teroptoroid slayer there is, and now, in 1960s Japan, she is sent to a US army base which may be infested. Looking at The Last Vampire is rather interesting because it's the most dark entry of the Blood franchise, and I'm perfectly okay with this. This dark, gritty style gives a completely different look and tone compared to Blood Plus and Blood C, along with completely different character designs that just add more to it. Honestly, I think it looks amazing. The animation manages to create a certain tone that the film follows over the course of 50 minutes, so you can't knock it for its lack of consistency. As for the soundtrack, it's a lot of stereotypical horror tracks you see in anime nowadays, but coming from a 2000 film, I'd say this isn't a bad thing. The big question that comes to mind when talking about the story is how the hell did they manage to create a good enough story for a 50 minute film? It basically takes this on by creating a simple Monster Hunter story and doesn't go into as many details and plot. This means there are much less plot holes left by the end, though we do still have some questions as to the Teropteroids and Saiya's existence. I feel like this was a purposeful move because this leaves room for a sequel or another adaptation to come along and continue the story. And as we've seen this past month, it worked. <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. Are you trying to surprise me now? There's not really a lot to say about characters here. We don't get a lot of time to spend with them, we don't really have a story, so there's not much we can talk about except for Saya. This iteration of Saya is a lot more dark and brooding than her Blood Plus and Blood Sea counterparts. If we were to trace the film and the TV series, this was before Blood Plus Saya loses her memory as to who and what she is, so this makes sense. I mentioned before that the film leaves questions about Saya's existence, so this contributes to her character quite a bit. The fact that we have almost no idea who this girl is, or what she is, makes her a mysterious character which, once again, I feel is a ploy to get viewer interest in order to gain more adaptations. It's a smart move for the long run, but then again it's not, because if the franchise never grew, we'd be sitting here talking about how badly developed Sai is instead of prepping for more of the franchise. Take a look inside. Hey! Save it. Oh, jeez. Saya, get a hold of yourself, now! Not the same thing again. Do you want to announce it to the whole world? The language track is actually rather interesting to talk about because it's a mix of both Japanese and English. At first I thought it was a mistake on my part because I saw subtitles come up on the screen, but then Saya comes in speaking English, so then I knew it was something else. This actually works rather well because the majority of the film is on an American military base in Japan during the Vietnam War, so English is gonna happen. Though some of the Japanese actors speaking English kind of hurts on occasion, but I can't complain as they have to speak English on an American military base. As for the cast of this film, Joe Ramorsa and Stuart Robinson as David and Lewis are rather solid listens on the English actor front, while on the Japanese front, Saimi Nakamura as the school nurse was pretty good as well. Then there's Yoki Kudo as Saya. Once again, an interesting mix of Japanese and English here that takes a bit of adjusting, but I thought the performance was fine. Not amazing, just fine. And this is all I know. I've told you everything I've seen with my own eyes. Even though I'm not sure you believe me. 
By the end of the infestation, Blood of the Last Vampire is an interesting introduction into the Blood franchise. The animation is solid, the language track is rather interesting, and it's easy to get through. The story and characters aren't much to be desired, but it's not a bad thing, as it does give us just enough information to possibly be interested in the other adaptations. Give this film a try if you're a fan of the Blood franchise, or if you just want a sneak peek into it. Next time, we teach some gods a thing or two about humans. Until then, otaku on, my friends.